is that actually the, the property use program is divided into two major components. One is related to the services, and you've just heard a presentation related to one of the services, the newest one, and indeed a very, a very interesting one, but there are many others like emergency management, uh, atmosphere monitoring, uh, marine environment monitoring, security, and of course, land monitoring. Each of them have uh, different uh, services and products. And on the other side, it is related to the actual space component, and um, I, will not, I will not go into, into detail and, and into, that, uh, into the space component because it's not, the, uh, it's not the scope of this presentation. But the context um, I'm, trying to, uh, I'm trying to portray here is pretty, is pretty impressive, I would say. However, uh, unfortunately, um, we can see uh, that um, the EO cloud, let's say, processing and analytical landscape in Europe is not matching our leadership and earth observational capacities. This is a reality that we um, that we are aware of, that we know. So uh, there are uh, efforts into into improving that. Um, a nice, a nice, or not a nice really, but an interesting, uh, an interesting um, um, article was published in the fourth, 2016, uh, saying that even though we have these amazing data sets, uh, a wealth of data, and we have a lot of technology, and we have a lot of computational power, and so on, unfortunately, the scientists still spend their time in the data management, let's say, burden. Uh, that 60% is for the cleaning and organizing of data, so we are still in that, uh, in that section, let's say. Um, I will not insist uh, a lot on, on the way that, um, on the policies that are coming from the, from the European Commission, we've heard about, we've heard about that. But what is important to mention is that the European Commission, in its way of, uh, of doing things, is working towards supporting the commercial sector as well as the, um, as well as the research and academia sector to, um, to increase the uptake of, this, um, of the Earth, uh, Earth observation uh, data. So what is it doing? Uh, as Robert was mentioning at the beginning, what they're doing is they're trying to support the, uh, the, the sectors, the private, the uh, scientific sector, academia and research, uh, and the non-governmental uh, um, sector to build tools, to build services, to build, to build products that are using Earth observation, and they're doing it in a... Um, um, in a quite, uh, let's say, um, in, a, in, a, in a way to support their, their policies that, uh, that I've, I've, uh, I've shown earlier. So um, the initiative that I'm going to talk about, the European project, which is called, uh, called the Open Earth Monitor uh, Cyber Infrastructure, is part of this, uh, it's part of this goal. It was uh, for building tools to support the uptake and the accessibility and exploitation of environmental observation at European and at global uh, level. But you can see that on these different uh, on these different topics, there are eight projects that have been that have been funded by the uh, by the European Commission. So, uh, what are the Earth uh, uh, Open Earth Monitor main objectives in a nutshell? <laughs> because the project is quite big, it has about 23 partners, 22. I will have, I will show the partners at the end. It is, it, uh, it is extended on a period of three years, and um, uh, it has a budget of approximately 12 million euros. So the first step that we um, that uh, we have uh, we have just finished is related to identifying what are the gaps and what are the needs at this uh, um, at this at this point. And then the second step is related to uh, not reinventing the wheel but using open source 
uh, in every step of the in every um, processing uh, chain, let's say for um, for analyzing Earth observation data, and then to build a better data portal if, for the for the services and products that we are that we are producing. Again, uh, using open source solutions, um, making that data fair. This is probably also an, uh, an acronym that you have heard uh, that you have heard quite quite often. And um, maybe all of these steps lead to the most important that is serving concrete uh, concrete goals. Um, and uh, the entire consortium, a lot of the partners have made and are still making extensive efforts into engaging as much as possible with potential uh, potential users of what we are of what we are producing. And um, you will see later uh, which are the domain uh, that are being targeted in that in that direction. Why is it important to engage with stakeholders? Well, because um, they are the ones that actually know what they need, and they are the ones that actually are able to offer you the user requirements, as we call them, what they need uh, for for the for the consortium to for the consortium to produce. And users can be basically anyone, uh, from other European institutions to national agencies, to even to other companies, to um, universities or research centers, because as I've, uh, I've tried to portray the, uh, the context, we are dealing with a wealth of data and not everyone still uh, has the infrastructure or has access to cloud infrastructure uh, in order to, uh, to, to, do their, to do their research. Um, so maybe I should go a bit faster. Uh, related to the use cases, main themes. As I've mentioned, our consortium is pretty big, over, uh, I think, 20 um, uh, companies, um, research centers, uh, universities, uh, not-for-profit organizations. So there is a lot of expertise. Uh, from software development to uh, different uh, environmental and um, earth science uh, domains, and these are the main uh, the main themes that are being uh, that are being exploited and du uh, during the uh, during the uh, open earth monitor project. What is great is that um, the consortium has fully agreed uh, from the beginning that everything that we do with relation to development of software to be made, uh, to be made uh, available under open source license. As I mentioned, we have absolutely no intention of reinventing the wheel. What we want is to improve what already exists. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the partners within the consortium are actually the, let's, call, let's say them, uh, call them core developers of different, of different um, solutions that we are using and this is another way uh, in which uh, they are using uh, money, um, public money to uh, advance the open source um, the open source solutions. With respect to the data and the product that we are building that you see in the different uh, in the different use cases, they will be uh, also openly licensed and openly available um, for the entire community, not only for the for the users with which we are with which we are interacting. Um, there was a question uh, I think at the um, at the top before related to the algorithms to produce the actual uh, um, services and uh, data products. And as the question, as the answer came then, the answer will come now. Some of these partners, some of the partners in the consortium are private, uh, private uh, in the private sector, and we, uh, usually the algorithms represent the added values that they do. So um, in some cases, that those will not be uh, openly licensed. What are we using? This is just a very small. Uh, very small selection of what we are using, so the obvious uh, usual suspects, I will not, say, I will not insist here. Uh, and how do these things happen? How do we start? How do we get to 
do a consortium for a three-year uh, project with 12 million and so on. So this actually started into um, uh, with the with the smaller with the smaller project. Five of the partners that are also part of the consortium at this point started that project that was funded under um, under uh, another uh, um, um, Connecting Europe facility call, which was for public open data. And what we have achieved in that in that project, uh, we are now basically scaling uh, scaling up. And the same principles that we have today for open Earth monitor, we had for the, this project, which was called Geo Harmonizer, uh, meaning that everything that we have developed during the project is available in public records in GitLab, uh, and the data is uh, is freely uh, is freely available in the Data uh, the consortium, of, uh, as I mentioned, is quite diverse. Uh, we have partners from the private sector, from the research sector, uh, and NGO. Uh, and uh, we would like to invite you to participate at one of the international uh, workshops that we are doing for the, for the project we are presenting uh, in much more detail, technical, and so on and so forth. Uh, what, are we, what are we accomplishing? This is a workshop that will be linked with the Eurogeo workshop in October in Bolsonaro, Italy. So with that, uh, thank you.